The Dutch mob, also known as the Macro Mafia, has long been a notorious criminal organization in the Netherlands. But the beginning of the Macro Mafia war between Benoof and Martha marked a dark turning point in their history. From brutal killings to complex power struggles, this is the story of how the Dutch mob descended into a violent underworld of drugs, money, and power. Stick around till the end because this video delves into a dark period in Dutch drug history. The time of Benefit and Gwyneth Martha marked a dramatic shift in how drug wars were fought. The Netherlands was plagued by bloody battles fought in crowded cities, resulting in innocent victims being sometimes murdered because they were mistaken for someone else. This tragic phenomenon became known as mistake murder when Martha's increasing imprisonment opened the door for Hoes and Najib Bubu to take on more leadership roles within the organization. However, Hoes quickly realized that he didn't need Martha and began to abuse his power and the resources that were once under Martha's control. But enough time had passed that Post's brother-in-law became involved in the cocaine business. As he rises to power, he orders 200 kilograms of cocaine to be picked up at the ports of Antwerp. In this shocking turn of events, it was revealed that the cocaine shipment that was supposed to arrive at the ports of Antwerp had gone missing. The group responsible for retrieving the cargo, known as the Turtles, claimed it had been intercepted. However, enough already that a rising leader in the criminal underworld did not believe this explanation. In response, he ordered a violent retaliation by sending in a team. The situation took a disturbing turn when they took a photograph of the kidnapped individual in a menacing and threatening situation, such as next to a meat grinder, and sent it to the victim's family. This extreme measure serves as a grim reminder of the brutal tactics used by criminal organizations in their quest for power and control in the world of Amsterdam's criminal underworld. Shooting Boo Boo had been meeting with a friend and a third unknown person at a hotel in Antwerp, but as they left the building, they were ambushed by three masked gunmen. Boo Boo was shot dead in the hotel parking lot news of the murder sent shockwaves through the criminal underworld and Martha was deeply affected by the loss of his dear friend. He was angry and vowed to seek vengeance for Boo Boo's death on December 29th of 2012. A tragic event occurred in Pocklington neighborhood where two young men, El Yazidi and Youssef Elkorf, were brutally killed with heavy automatic weapons. This was a shooter. After a short chase in the snow, a delay crashes his car and jumps into the water to swim to the other side. The police fired a shot, and a hold was hit and surrendered to the police on the other side of the water on March 16, 2013. Then, 21-year-old Ryder Venegan was murdered on the streets of Amsterdam. Ryder Venegan is seen as the one who lured the nerf to the Stats Liedenberg neighborhood. Ryder was originally a member of the Benefit Group. Still, things took a dramatic turn when Gunna failed to pay Ryder for a job that he had completed. This betrayal led to Ryder's defection to Martha's camp, but unfortunately, it cost him his life. This story serves as a reminder of the harsh realities of loyalty and betrayal. In a tragic turn of events, a young father named Stefan Egermont was killed in a mistaken murder. He had just returned home after watching a soccer match at his brother's house. He was searching for a parking spot on his street. Omar was also the older brother of Yusef Korf, who was brutally killed in the Stas Ledin neighborhood. Stefan was likely still sitting in his car. He didn't even see the gunman approaching, who walked up to the car and shot multiple times through the driver's door without checking who was inside. Stefan was mistaken for Omar because he drove precisely the same kind of car that Omar did. This was just the beginning of a long and devastating war that led to countless casualties. In our next episode, we'll be jumping forward in time to look at the current players in the Dutch criminal landscape. Macro Mafia, the Invisible Gomorrah of Holland, Gwyneth Martha, the boss of Amsterdam. The Macro Mafia trial, which was given that moniker by the Dutch media to describe the active gangs in the city who have bloodied the streets of Amsterdam since 2012, started at the end of January of 2015 
becoming one of the most dramatic trials in recent Dutch history. Around 20 deaths have been left on the asphalt in less than 10 years, according to the weekly crime magazine Rebu. From Willemstad, Anteles, to the Pige. The Gomorrah tale in Amsterdam is multi-ethnic and weaves immigrants and subsequent generations together. Everything is in the center. Nicknames such as Popeye, the mayor, the man without a shadow, and Pirki. Violence, weapons, and rivers of cocaine. Although we're talking about the Netflix series Gamora, this is a real-life Amsterdam incident. Rivu claims that it all started when Gwinnett Martha, arguably the most well-known criminal in the city, came to Amsterdam from Curaco as a young child with his mother. They settled in the Pibj neighborhood, which was a challenging location at the time with Giovanni, Martha's older brother. The young Martha was a talented soccer player who even caught Ajax's eye. As Martha worked out during the day, he and his friends committed little crimes at night. His time playing soccer was short-lived, but the other side of his life would only worsen. Soon, Martha's band of small-time offenders turned into a legitimate gang. Revenge is a dish best served cold. A dispute with a rival North African gang in 1992 outside the Escape nightclub on Rembrandton Plain turned into a Wild West style shootout. A month after turning 18, Martha's life was permanently transformed. Giovanni, Martha's brother, was shot by Mumi, a rival gang member, and died while in his arms. From that moment on, Martha dealt with robberies and thefts while impatiently anticipating the ideal opportunity to make amends with his brother's killer. Meanwhile, the young Antalyan's gang expanded. Najib Boubao, a North African known as De Burgemeester, was one of his adherents, the mayor. As Martha's gang used the money to control the cocaine market and the ecstasy business, the robberies were left to addicts and lone wolves. They took Amsterdam. The Martha clan grew far too quickly, as with many illegal enterprises. In 10 years, Antalano rose to power as the leader of Amsterdam and other radicalized criminal organizations. They set out to control one of Europe's most lucrative drug marketplaces. But occasionally, civilizations fall apart from within. The first indications of his downfall were apparent when his dependable Bu Bao was shot dead. Even though Martha ultimately ended the search that had haunted him for years in 2003 by killing his brother's murderer. Competitors had yet to reach the same level of prominence as the Martha family at the turn of the millennium. The boss and the next victim were him. After 10 years, the King of Amsterdam was still firmly in control of the cocaine market in the city. Still, there was a new difficulty, a disagreement with Hussein his other most devoted servant. Another clan had formed the criminal underground during those years. The criminal organization from Edhoven, led by Banuf A, grew swiftly and attempted to challenge the king for control of the economy. Martha Cartel against Banuf A. The crisis came to a head on a May evening in 2013 at the Amsterdam Schipvaarts Museum. During the waterfront dance party, a social event attended by famous soccer players and members of the criminal underworld. The treasurer of the Banuf clan was shot. Sorail I, cousin of Gwinnett Martha, calmly approached Suhail Lashir, one of the Enhoven gangster's colleagues, and fatally shot him, according to a security guard. Then, Sorail I reholstered his firearm and left in silence. Sorail was sentenced to 25 years in jail in September of 2017. In vengeance for the murder of Bubu, the men of Banuf A ordered this murder. The motive for Bubu's murder was classic mafia. A member of the opposing clan had to exact revenge for Bubu's involvement in a 2012 incident involving 200 kilograms of cocaine worth around 14 million euros that had arrived at the port of Antwerp. The bestseller, Macro Mafia, skillfully describes how the mafia conflict in the capital began with this murder, according to the press and investigators. What are your thoughts on this? 
please let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications before leaving. Thanks for watching.